So you would be forgiven for thinking that Inkscape is a weak application because it's open source and it's free. So why would it be as good as other apps like Illustrator or Procreate or things like that? Well, today I'm going to show you exactly why Inkscape is so good and why this app has existed for so long. Here are my tips and tricks for Inkscape. Hello again my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another video and today I'm going to be showing you the fundamentals of Inkscape, the skills that you're going to need to learn to become proficient with this application. So without further ado, let's get into it. The properties bar is a dynamic toolbar that's placed at the top of your screen and I say it's dynamic because it will change with every single thing that you do. If you create a new shape it will change in the properties bar. If you have got a certain tool selected from the toolbar at the left hand side again the properties bar will change. These are always the shortcuts for the tool that you are using or the shape that you have got selected. So I suggest keeping an eye on this bar because most of the things that you want to do within Inkscape can be done by using the shortcuts in the properties bar. When it comes to graphic design, resizing and rotating your objects are the bedrock of any design and Inkscape is no different. In Inkscape all you have to do is use your select tool, click on the object that you want to change and you will get the resize handles allowing you to change the size of your object. However, if you hold shift and control at the same time you can keep the dimensions of the original shape. For example, if you have a perfect circle and you want to increase the size, you can do so simply by holding shift and control. Secondly, if you click on the object again, you will get the rotation handles. These work in much the same way, except the flat sides will have a skew option. As you can see on the screen, by using that and a combination of the shift and control, you can lock it onto its axis and create some skewed boxes or objects. You can also go to the corner and do exactly the same, but this time rotating it around its anchor point. And just like resizing, if you hold shift and control, you can change the way it behaves. So the anchor point. The anchor point is something that signifies where you are going to rotate around. So if I move the anchor point below the object and then try and rotate, as you can see it is not rotating from the center of the object. It's rotating from wherever I put the anchor point. And holding control will allow me to move in 15 degree increments. Now as you can see in the example on screen, by simply combining these methods you can make some really cool designs. I made a shape that looks kind of like a leaf, moved the anchor point to the center of the circle that you can see, then while holding control and then pressing the space bar as I move around, I can stamp copies of my object in a circular pattern. It really is that simple. Then after adding some gradients and some different colors you can make a really really smart design. The Align and Distribute menu is one of the most useful tools that you can use within Inkscape. Every single graphic design application has something along these lines but in my personal opinion this is where Inkscape outdoes them all. The amount of options you have got is unbelievable in comparison to some other applications. In short, the Align and Distribute menu will allow you to line up two or more objects. 
You can line them up vertically in a line with equal spacing, horizontally in exactly the same way, or you can simply just get two shapes and align both of the edges together so you can make sure that your designs are perfectly level. Don't sleep on the align and distribute, it will help you a lot. Edit Pass by Nodes is one of my favourite tools because it is so versatile and helps you out massively with your workload. Every application that you will use for graphic design will have some kind of node editing ability. But in Inkscape, I genuinely think this is the best version of an Edit Pass by Nodes tool that I have seen. With that said, as you can imagine, there is a lot to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, but I will give you the basics. Edit Paths by Nodes allows you to select the little diamonds and squares that you will see on the objects that you have selected. These are the nodes. By clicking them, deleting them, or selecting them, you can move them to any position you want. And by using the handles that are attached to each node, the little lines that are poking out that you can see, you can change the arc of any of the curves within your drawing. This gives you a lot of freedom to create anything that your imagination can come up with. The Edit Paths by Nodes tool is also a huge help when you are going from sketch to graphic like I showed you in last week's video. So I strongly suggest playing around with it, getting familiar and comfortable with the tool because it will help you in the future. Paths and strokes are the two types of image that you will be working with the most while in Inkscape. A path is simply a object, a shape that you have created that has nodes around the outside. A stroke is the border that goes around your object. So as you can see on screen, I have a funky little object on screen which is purple and we have a black stroke. Now these can be manipulated independently from each other, but will stay connected until you change it. However, when it comes to the stroke menu, there are a few other options that you can do that are worth noting. You can change whether you want it to be dashed or dotted like a signature box or something like that. And you can also change the join and the cap to being squared, rounded or cut off like you can see in the example on the screen. The order is simply the order on which they will be shown. So if you have your fill colour over the top, your border is going to be smaller because half of it cannot be seen. The pen tool. One of the most annoying tools to learn, but then once you have learned it, one of the tools that you simply could not live without. The pen tool is so versatile, but it is also quite difficult to use. So here are the basics and the fundamentals of the pen tool in Inkscape. Firstly, while using the default variation of the pen, you will notice when you click an area on your canvas and then click another area, a perfectly straight line will be drawn between the two. If you click and hold, you can then move the handles away from the point you've just clicked and create a curve like you can see on screen right now. That is the basic way of using the pen tool. However, with it being the pen tool, that's not all there is to it. That would be too easy. Well, now there is also different modes. The mode you can see on screen right now is the spirals mode. This allows you to always make 
curved edges. It will never ever make a straight line. So you pick two lines and it will curve a line between the two. If you pick three, then it will loop around, as you can see on screen right now. Now for me personally, when it comes to variations of the Inkscape pen tool, this is my favorite. It allows you to draw as many straight lines as you want, and then it will draw a curved line around it. So it doesn't matter what shape you create, Inkscape will do all the hard work and manage to find you the perfectly shaped arc that will fit all of the lines that you have just chosen by doing one continuous curve, like you can see on screen right now. It helps so much, especially when you can't seem to get your curves to look right within your design. The last two variations of the pen tool are pretty much the same and I don't really understand why they are there. But that's just me, I've not had any need to use either of these variations but just so you know, one is going to enable you to draw nothing but straight lines. You are not able to draw any curved lines at all. And the final variation is to always draw straight lines that are at right angles of each other. So they will only ever do 90 degree turns, no matter what angle you have. And that is it, my friends. If I have missed anything off this list that you think I should have added, then please let me know in the comment section down below, and maybe I will do another video just like this one. But for now, that is all you need to know to get you going in Inkscape. So if you found this useful or helpful in any way, please let me know. If you have any designs that you want me to showcase in a future video, then send them in to buttonpressgraphics at gmail.com. I would absolutely love to see them. But for now, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell. Say thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you in the next one.